Kyle Crabtree here from Gorilla Gurus and Tampa Printer for the Gorilla Gurus Marketing Happy Hour. Yeah. Today we are doing Blue Hawaiians, Ooh. and we are doing in, in theme for paper umbrellas and print. Our guest today is Miss Deborah Korn, the uh, the ambassador to the Printerverse uh, at Print Media Center. Uh, Deborah is the uh, the leading expert in uh, printing related to social media. Uh, nationwide, worldwide. I mean, she is a, a globe-trotting uh, trade show connoisseur. Uh, and that's where actually where I met Miss Deborah. Yes. And Deborah is one of my favorite people. How are you today, Deb? I'm really, really, really excited to be here. Ook, ook, ook to all the uh, gorilla <laughs> gurus out there in podcast land listening. Um, really excited to talk about marketing for small businesses today. One of my favorite freaking subjects. Yeah. Um, so... You know, what we do is we, we start here at the bar. We're going to make a cocktail. So I'm going to make the Blue Hawaii in here while we kind of get to know each other. And uh, our audience ha doesn't know you from Adam. So we want to know about, about Deborah Korn and, and Print Media Center and the Printerverse. Okay. Uh, well, thank you so much again. Um, so as Will said, my name is Deborah Korn, like the vegetables, as opposed to like the band with the K. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I am the self-proclaimed intergalactic ambassador to the Printiverse. Intergalactic? Yeah. That's fantastic. My uh, website provides print and marketing research, uh, what I call print inspiration for print and marketing professionals. I've been doing that for about 11 years. Years prior to that, I worked in advertising agencies as a print customer. So I would work with printers and suppliers to get marketing executed, and uh, also, uh, you know, worked at, at brands too. And so, you know, I have a lot of exposure to all of that kind of stuff. And uh, in 2008, I found myself out of a job like most people. I opened up a LinkedIn group for uh, print production professionals, it actually became the number one print group in the world. And uh, from there, I've just been really, um, you know, helping people connect through social media, like uh, Will said, and um, also, uh, you know, developed a lot of community initiatives to bring people together and um, champion print, as Will said, across, around the world. I mean, it's absolutely insane that my life became like anywhere my phone was, as long as I could connect to a Wi-Fi, I could, that was my office, you know? And uh, what I was basically doing was reporting back to the audience everything I was seeing around the world at these global events and stuff on through social media. So, you know, it's just been a really interesting and fun journey. And as Will said, I met him at a trade show. I used to have this booth and we would do educational panels and Will was across the aisle. We were making lots of noise in my booth and this guy just kept poking his little head around. He's like, I don't know what's going on there, but it looks like fun. So he came over and introduced himself and lo and behold, I moved to Florida, you know, and uh, it turns out I'm 10 minutes away from him across the bridge in St. Petersburg. So I've been following Will's amazing journey uh, through from when he was, you know, selling software to now uh, a print and marketing empire. And I'm just so, so proud of him. So honored to be here today and proud to be here today. Too. Oh, thanks, Dad. Yeah, you know I love you. <laughs> this is a smart guy. Oh, don't give me too much credit. All right, so we're going to take a quick shake break. Because this shake one apparently break. I shake have break. to shake. All Hashtag right, so. shake break. That is blue. It is definitely blue. Why is it blue? Because it has blue shit in it? I don't know. Blue Curacao, which was invented by the Bulls Corporation, which was a Dutch liquor company. Uh, blue Curacao is made from the Lahara plant, which is a citrus that is too bitter to eat, but they age the uh, peels and make this liquor. Wow. Right. That was quite impressive, sir. Right? The internet is fantastic. Now do uh, Casau. Oh, oh that Curacao. is Curacao. That is what that is. What that is. Now. All right. So we're going to need to mix a little bit more here. Did you under pour? Well, I filled the whole thing up. Well, why you do know. you have to? It usually gets Oh, no. Like we're fruit. filling them up. We're ah. filling them up. <laughs> it usually has fruit and stuff. We'll do just one more shot of vodka. Okay. It smells pretty good. It does smell good. Yeah. I wish I was in Hawaii. Right? I want to go to Hawaii. Hawaii. I've never been. I've, I've never been, been either. To Hawaii. When I, I first moved either. to Florida, I'll tell you a funny story. When I first uh, related to Hawaii, 
when I first moved to Florida, I worked at an advertising agency. And the first, when I got my check, I went to HR and I was like, something's wrong. There's definitely too much money in my check. <laughs> and they're like, no, uh, Florida doesn't, you know, doesn't take the state state pay, income tax state tax out. I said, what? I went to Publix and I bought macadamia nuts. I had macadamia nut money. Mm. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is a great new qualifier for right? how much I have in my wallet. Yeah, is it macadamia like, nut money or not? Because that shit's like yeah. 20 bucks for a little jar. And I just walked into Publix and I was like, I want macadamia nuts. Didn't now, even think twice. No, on a different level, they used to call like, you know, if, whether you're not, you had giraffe money, like Michael Jackson. Oh, right? okay, yeah. Like, ri- ri- Lamborghini's not rich. Giraffe money is rich. <laughs> <laughs> so you I gotta... stole it, made it, made it macadamia nut money for, for regular people. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll be referencing it the other way. Yeah. It's like, oh, you just got paid. Buy me a drink. Hey, man, I, did, I don't have macadamia nut money. <laughs> right, there <laughs> like... you go. You know how we're going to fix that? Mine's just a little lower. We're going to put a little, rum, little, little rum floater on that. There you go. Oh, you are a rum floater. Go. I oh, was yeah. just going to trade. So that one will be yours. Perfect. And we'll do the rum floater on the top. And how that about will, that? That will make it truly traditional. Oh, look at you guys. How lovely. They did modify the, the drink f- because I didn't want any rum. So thank you, gentlemen, very You're much. You're very welcome. Well, originally it was supposed to be uh, mint juleps. Yeah, hell no. Print <laughs> and mint juleps, but uh, no bourbon for Deborah. No. Mint juleps are a fakie for the... Uh, Unanointed. People think, oh, they, they think it's like a grasshopper yeah. or a shamrock no, shake. No, and no, it no. is not. I was in New Orleans or New Orleans uh, the first time I tried one. And I was like, oh, you know, let's try a mint julep. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is not a cocktail for, for amateurs. Correct. <laughs> it's definitely a professional cocktail. It's it's bourbon with a twist. Yes. Yeah. What, how lovely little paper. Little paper umbrellas. Yeah, we gotta we gotta do the thing if we're gonna have paper umbrellas as part of the theme. Oh, we yeah. gotta actually a blue have or a red straw. Um, I'll take a blue straw. Keep right. with the blue. There we go with the, the theme. Hawaii theme. I like it. I love it, William. All right, let's uh, let's try these cocktails. See how either glorious or horrible they are. Cheers. Mm-hmm. Cheers. Cheers. Pretty tasty. Quite all right with that. It's pretty tasty. I would say it's uh, acceptable. Woo. Mm-hmm. It's tasty, sir. It's up. It's it's. I could drink it, which yeah. could be a problem. There you go. There you go. As long as you can drink it. Oh, well, there's like can... pineapple juice in it. Or something? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, pineapple it's, juice. It has an, It's like all coming together now. It's quite aromatic. Hmm. Um, so, Deborah, uh, I, I don't want to go too far down the rabbit hole on, on some of the stuff that we talk about in, in our other podcast. And, and for those of you guys that are listening, we do have another podcast that Deborah and I are on that's specific for the, the printing industry, Printer Chat. Um, but for, for what you've been doing related to trade shows and how trade shows have been impacted in the last you know two years, what has that landscape looked like for you and, 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 and how that's affected both your your social media marketing and attending shows and, and all of that. Um, well, for me, it was one of those. Oh, now I understand what you should have a diverse customer base means. So, because I did not have one, I also did not have toilet paper. So there was two things I did not have when the pandemic <laughs> started <laughs> in March 2020. Um, you know, I'm a I'm a little bit of a different situation because I don't. It's not like I have a business where there's specific products and services. It's more like I look at the landscape of the printing industry. I see their needs and I see how my particular skills or audi- uh, reach with the audience can help create create a message or pass along a message or deliver a message. So I just kept – I keep reinventing myself. Um, now, I will tell you that – Events are coming back for sure. Right, and um, there was yes. something really interesting that um, my mother actually told me. Um, she she got um, in. She lives in Sarasota, and there was a full page ad from a bunch of theaters that had banded together to tell the community about their COVID 
their their safety measure, measures and about how everyone would have to be show vaccination to be in the theater and there was whatever the other rules were that were set out to make people feel comfortable to come back to the theater to support the arts don't let them die she got a subscription to a bunch I mean, well she didn't get a subscription she bought tickets to a bunch of shows so that's a uh, the, I'm saying it because it was a print ad it was a full page print ad in a local newspaper that drove her to a website that uh, and then she did further research to make sure what was going on and now she's going back to the theater so it's just a great idea uh, you know of the power of like even local print advertising in, in communicating a message. That's awesome. Good stuff. So Mike, what about you? What have, what have you done that is, is print related? Not since you've been working here. So in your, in your past life, in past lives, past lives, uh, I've, I've done a lot. So, um, I was a partner on a magazine. Oh, um, which took a, a different approach than most magazines. Uh, it was called SubApp, the Suburban Apologist. And so we took a former music magazine, uh, Reax, and kind of changed it. So it was a free publication done on newsprint, but large format that we put in boxes all around town. And it didn't come to fruition the way we saw it, but we did about uh, four issues that focused on art and music. And for that, it was all stuff that we felt really only translated to print, uh, especially putting it on something tactile like the newsprint and doing like larger spreads. You could really see um, like street art translates better, I think, there than it does in, in digital format. Mm, yeah, for sure. So because you're yeah. actually feeling it, you're touching it. Yeah. Um, we used high quality printing, but it would still come off on your fingers, which is still part of the cool of that whole thing. Uh, before we did that, we uh, I've done tons of flyers <laughs> from running a record store, being a promoter, flyers constantly, uh, concert posters, and then you know things like personally, I collect concert posters, and I like having that hard thing that I can touch and it's mine, kind of. Kind of the horrible way. I still like having CDs just because I own something. <laughs> you know, right. I can touch it. I don't even have a CD player anymore. But I've got all those ugly plastic cases with cool art inside that right. I can flip through. Yeah, um, just the liner notes. And I've always been a comic book head. Um, so print has always been a big part of my life. Um, I never, before working here, really thought through the process of it. That, you know, you have these great ideas, but then... You have somebody else who knows what to do, take care of those details for right. you, uh, and it's a little more complicated than I thought it would be. It's not. Yeah. It's not the uh, copier uh, the public library used right. to use for punk rock shows. Right. right. I used to say when I worked in advertising, and people asked me what I did, it was very hard to explain to like what I call civilians what you do. If you know, mm -hmm. if you're not involved in, in all of this stuff, and I used to say that I bring creative ideas to life. And that's, that's what you're mm -hmm. saying. It's like the other end of it. It's like, how does it actually get done? You know, it's one thing to have an idea. It's another thing to manifest it, you know, in the world, especially the way it was intended. Right. Print is fun. Can be fun. I like it. <laughs> well, I own a printing company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've got lots of experience with print and printing. Right. Uh, but I've been doing direct mail for 15 years flyer design and flyer distribution, and marketing related to print. It's been a, been a long, long career in, in printing. Um, digital marketing as well. They've, yeah. they've, they tie together and more so now than they ever have before. Um, but it's uh, it's interesting to see the evolution of, of print and the printing industry as a whole has evolved considerably mm -hmm. in the last uh, the last decade. Well, you say print is fun, which is interesting because, yeah, it's fun because there's more real estate. You can actually spend time with it. There, You can commun communicate more. But it's also something – all of those reasons is also why it 
garners results when you're trying to to you know use it in a marketing campaign. And on the other end of how things could work together, especially now, like think of your concert posters. What if you could just put your phone up to it and it gives you the link to download the latest single from the band or right, it or gives even you tickets. a it gives you a sneak peak or exactly it goes right to Ticketmaster or tickets exactly um, and you could buy tickets or or get inside fan information or every Friday get a message from the band or something like that. Now that is a piece of print that's going to be around for a long time. Same thing as the in the comic book market. I mean, it's not the comic books itself. It's all the collectible items are around them. I always say the printing industry is missing out on a lot of like those game gamer conventions and making like thousand dollar Warcraft books and people like thousand. I'm like yes. <laughs> I was like, and if they buy them for a thousand, make them two thousand. <laughs> like you got to find the number that people are clamoring to to get it. But it's a different it's a different engagement. You know, like it's an emotional attachment that you're gonna have to that that poster, right? Of your right. Band. Well, and I think that we locally have been reintroducing a lot of bands to there's a lot of digital marketing that's very expensive to event spaces mm -hmm. and so Ooh, I'm getting now, ideas. That, now that they're coming back into it <gasps> that posters. the power of a show poster whether it's collectible or not is huge because I'm going to see it somewhere where I'm having a good time I'm already in a positive frame of mind where on digital I'm just as likely to catch you on the toilet as anywhere else. Right. Yeah. So, so you see this poster, and it's like, oh, I'm having a good time now, and I want to plan for the next good time I'm going to have, and now I see that, and that looks really cool. And like you were saying, I put a QR code on that that's going to take them to buy the ticket or explain more about the band so mm -hmm. they can learn something about what that experience is going to be. And now that finite piece of print becomes experiential yeah. it becomes well, part of the past especially if they don't know the band then it's also an educational component yeah. and and you know i know geofencing i know all of that stuff but you also ha can have a pretty good idea where the people that would want to listen to that band are hanging out and i'm sorry but telephone poles and and uh light light posts are still Viable guerrilla yeah. marketing yeah. Oh, spaces. Oh yeah, absolutely they are. And um, a lot of people, if I was up there, like, hey, you know, next Saturday, uh, you know, grand reopening or you know, two for one happy hour with this band. Scan it and you know, get a little taste of it. Or you know, it really, flyers have become novel again. They've become something that people get excited about. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times I've been out passing out flyers and gotten just. Fuck off! Get away from me! I don't want you know people yeah. just sneer at you, and it's hard to give somebody a flyer now because no one does it anymore. Yeah. So you try to hand somebody, they're like, "Really? Yeah!" You know, they get excited about it. So it's 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 kind of making a comeback if people take advantage of it, especially for nightlife and I was for. Say, there's a demographic right, right, right. for you know, people the, the, coming out of the clubs. You hand them the flyer, right? So. Or just walking around the, the the nightlife areas. You know, there's. In in the same sense of that, and uh, my apologies, is is also the tuck it under the windshield wiper in a in right. a thing. I mean, that's a little more annoying to me, but but it's a classic move. Same <laughs> result if yeah. you are looking for a specific demographic and you know what zip code they live in, you know what kind of cars you're targeting. And it, I think just a little caveat though is you got to put in the work. Yes. Don't hand me something that looks like a business card. Don't hand me something that looks like an ad. I want something that looks like an experience. I want something that looks fun and like something I want to do if it's pertaining to a show or right. something nightlife. Piece of art. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's all a reflection on the ex experience. You're absolutely right. I um was I actually did an event the other night. It was online, but um it was about the retail experience and. I'm like, retail experience. I was actually a doubter of my own event. I'm producing my own event, and I'm a doubter of this because we've heard retail apocalypse so so many times. I'm like, who in God's name is going to go to a store anymore? I mean, I don't, you know. I don't. But <laughs> that's because they're not going to make it so it's a store anymore because nobody wants to go. Now you go like uh, they. I we saw this whole presentation about the uh, the store Nike store in New York City. You go in there, you could pick out. You can they print 
stuff on your shoes while you're waiting. Like there's you, you there's this interactive thing where your shoes come in a locker and you have to un. Lock it with your phone. And this QR codes are all over the place. There's not even people in there. So people aren't going to end. It was all print. It was all, everything there was printed. So that was kind of the point. But I'm sorry. I would want to go into that store, which is the whole the whole point of, you know, how they're changing that now. Right. So it, it being an experience as opposed to just I'm going to go buy a thing and there's a thing there. You don't have so, to. There's no reason. Who in their right mind who just needs a thing is right. going to a store. Right. So what, what you want is an experience or a service that you can't get necessarily online. So another example I'm seeing in retail that print would be great to let people know about is more of the concierge type experience mm -hmm. of like, OK, you're not just going to a store to pick stuff out. You're going to a store to meet a person who's gonna work with you to get you exactly what you want as opposed to just another thing. And those are the stores I think that are doing well, but how do you know which stores do that and which don't? And in that, whether it's direct mail or posters and lifestyle sinks, like where we talk about putting up stuff for bands, you don't just put them up where bands play. Right. You put them up where people who go to shows hang out or shop. Mm -hmm. I'm really into this these local papers now. I think that, you know, that we moved away from all of that. Who's reading a local paper? Everybody's online. But it moved my mother. It moved it mo it's moving people and apparently people are really reading local papers again. I mean because they, you know, it's it's um it's seen as trusted. Mm -hmm. Cuz it's in, still in a paper and people s still have the idea of if it's in a paper. That it's being vetted. There's, it's more trustworthy information if it's coming. Someone's actually right. making sure the paper's not going to be sued. You know? Right. Gotcha. That makes sense. I mean, if you're look, I mean, but again, everybody has their own papers, so that means that there's still positions that papers are taking. They're just not may maybe going that further, you know, of the, f you know, the lies, you know, whatever. But um, I think it's a viable a print ad is what I'm saying, you know, in a local. For a local thing, I go to this bagel store. I, I know I always tell you my bagel store, my bagel store stories. But right by the cash register, they have like this local magazine, and every time I'm in there, I pick it up and I look through it, and I'm really interested to see what's going on. Well, I look at like our um, Creative Loafing, which is the all weekly magazine. I actually look through those ads, pay attention to them more than I do a lot of the digital stuff, yeah. only because I know that they're supporting our community and our uh -huh. scene by putting ads. Somewhere that's paying for actual local journalists to do their job. Yeah, hundred percent. I I agree with that too. I've been supporting more, uh, believe it or not, digital newspapers and magazines because I, I it doesn't matter. It's the New York Times. That, you know, at that point, to, for the journalists. Yeah, you know, yeah. I think I think that kind of stuff is taking a comeback. And anybody who's already putting uh, an ad in a in a paper or magazine is already in on p the power of print and everybody reading it is also in on that too uh whether or not their next move is to go to a, a facebook page or a website who cares print is the thing that got them there is what that got them the result and that's what you know the power of print ultimately absolutely absolutely well, let's uh, let's take these cocktails into the lounge and uh, let's let's dive uh, into this a little bit more. Sweet. So yeah, so the 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 power of print is is uh, it's changed, it's changed a lot, and it's going to continue to change. But to your point. If you see an ad in a local newspaper or you see a, a band poster or you get a flyer on the street, it's still typically prompting you to a website or to a social media page or to something that lives in the digital world, but you have something tangible that is driving to that. And even further, if you talk about signage and you talk about brick and mortar business and Google My Business and all of these other things, it all starts from something in the real world, right? Yeah. It all starts from something real before it goes into the digital multiverse, right? Yeah, but I mean, print is informational. That's um, whether it's a directional sign, go this way, or, um, you know, 
this it's it's no different. You used to call a phone number, you know, um, or when there was no internet. Um, if you watch TV, it's your, the call to action is go to the store and get this product. So it's all about just finding that initial connection, however you can, which is why using the most channels is 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 the strategy. But for sure, the only bridge to digital is print. I haven't seen like, you know, I, I'm i just saying I have never seen a banner ad that says click here to order a brochure. <laughs> I'm just saying I've never have. I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I have not, never seen that, you know, but I have seen print, you know, asking you if you want more print, go to this website and get more print from us. Mm. In the form of a magazine, a catalog, a, you know, with in, informational, again, information education. I'm pretty sure that we have a digital ad somewhere out there that says click here to order a brochure. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> but. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, you know, printing is, is it's, I mean, it's a monster. It's one of the biggest industries on the planet, um, remains as such, is, has seen some, uh, decreases overall as an industry. We've seen a lot of of printing companies go out of business. We've seen mergers and manufacturers of equipment. We've seen manufacturers of equipment go out of business. We've seen a bunch of new manufacturers pop up. Um, it's just like any other industry. It's it's volatile and it, it's it's evolving and, and changing. Um, but you know, USPS is is still kicking. They're still around, and uh, direct mail is is making a huge comeback as well. Um, the, they say that mail is, is actually more viable now than it really ever has been because of, uh, again, the digital reinforcement and the different things that accompany your mail. And I know, you know, people at, at the post office and, and you're a big champion for, uh, for USPS. I love USPS. I love, I love direct mail. Um, but, uh, what, what are you seeing in, in, in the industry right now, as far as, is, is direct mail and trends related to that? Well, there is a little problem with the current post office uh, master general. So um, there, I'm just saying in the fact that, you know, they just raised prices in the, for mail and they slowed down the service. Mm-hmm. So I think that that just has to be said because, you know, I, I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm getting my mail. I mean, now they're saying the acceptable delivery is up to 10 days, like mm-hmm. it used to be three days. Okay. Right. But – I think that's important to say because now you know the parameters. Mm -hmm. Now you know that this is the situation. So it's all about being smarter with what you put into the mail stream, which, you know, goes back to print. It just can't end on that piece of print. It needs to go to the digital bridge and keep people engaged in some way. Now, with all that to the side, you're absolutely right. I mean, the going to the mailbox in 2020 was like a family event, <laughs> you know? Everyone would hold hands and go to the mailbox and see what was in there. And, uh, you know, it was also really an indicative sign of what was going on in society. You know, I still haven't seen any luxury ads coming my way. No one's telling me to buy jewelry, like, beyond, you know, holiday engagement time. But, I mean... Nothing lu- luxurious is still flying around. I saw my first, I can't, I can't help but laugh. For, I saw my first ad for a cruise ship the other day. I'm like, why are they trying this again? <laughs> so I don't know what's going to go on with that, uh, but as I would still probably avoid that. They're pushing it hard. Yeah, okay. Well, good luck with all that, everybody. Oh, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Uh, oh, and people are going to go. It, it's going to happen. They're 100% going to go. And like I said, good luck. Good luck with all of that. There's been a couple of funny viral videos of people don't realize they have to be vaccinated before they go on a cruise ship. Um, but um, ultimately, what happened is that people are on digital overload, and they they really are. And all those ads flying by are were are just you know made people's brains explode. And they were the mailbox became like a really intimate place to communicate with somebody, whether it was a handwritten note. Or it was, I got tons of um, mail from like my loyalty programs, like making sure they knew what was going on. I knew what was going on and they didn't want me to leave. Customer retention, you know, customer uh, experience was super important. No spraying, praying uh, in my mailbox. No, you know, I wasn't even getting circulars for a while there because people were just pulling back. But now um, that actually plays to the advantage now that, Businesses are reopening and 
what I call the endemic is near. Um, it's time to start letting people know you're back, you're open, and whatever other piece of information they might need. For my mother, she needed, because actually I should have mentioned this, she, she's um, immunocompromised, so she wasn't going anywhere unless she knew everybody was, was vaccinated or and had to prove it. So that newspaper ad was, and the research she did was enough for her to, to do that. So it might be the same thing for a law firm or for a florist or for anything else. Like we're back, you know, we're open. Uh, you know, if, if it's a situation where you, you want to discuss, you know, policies or, you know, just, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of these sanitizing cleaning, uh, franchises that are opening up where they sanitize the office. Maybe you just want to tell people, hey, every night we clean this restaurant with this company. You know, that could be a reason somebody starts going to your restaurant, you know. So I think there's a, a real opportunity still in the mailbox. And I know that uh, you too also champion Every Door Direct Mail. So maybe you tell everybody what that is. I do. And, and Every Door Direct Mail, which is kind of the next topic I was going to uh, bring up is, you know, when you're when you're talking about a local business, right? So you mentioned restaurant, you mentioned law office, um, you know, people will travel outside of sort of their bubble to go to these places. But a lot of people in the primary, especially for you know restaurants and bars and things like that, um, your your audience is close to you. It's within proximity. Um, and every door direct mail is uh, is a reduced postage uh, mailing method. The way it works is is you see Mike, you you have the same postman or post person that you see every day. Mm -hmm. you, Me you too. See the I same love post person. Um, I wave every day. They, that's their route, right? So they're yeah. on the yeah. same route all the time. So what the post office has done is they've taken those routes, and you can buy an entire route. So you can say that I'm going to go to every mailbox in that route and that's every door, right? So you can't say, well, I only want to hit this house, that house and that house that you have to buy a list, the lead list or have the leads then do regular direct mail. But every door direct mail, as long as you're going to go to that entire route, you can buy that route and it's a reduced postage rate for the number of uh, uh, houses that you hit. So for local business and brick and mortar, it's a very affordable way to have that dialogue with somebody that's within close proximity to your business. Um, we just ran a uh, we just ran some quotes for uh, a client that we do geofencing and we do some other things for uh, their local uh, live music bar and restaurant Hooch and Hive. We'll just say their name yeah. Hooch and Hive. So we were Love talking them. to Hooch and Hive about their Hooch and Hive. Hooch and Hive. I like it. We were talking to them about doing an every door direct mail for mm -hmm. them and hitting all of the the new condo buildings and everything because they're right yeah. around the corner from here. Um, and it, you know, for 2,500 pieces for a six and a quarter by nine, I want to say it was around like $1,400. But with with printing, the more you do, the lower the cost per piece gets. And when we got up to, I think, 10,000 mailboxes, it was around uh, I want to say it was around like 49 cents per piece. And that was print, mail, postage, you know, everything out the door. So around five thousand dollars for 10,000 mailboxes. Um, and then I even did like uh, for for USPS, they have uh, an interactive map where you can actually go in and map. you can yeah. see the routes and you can see some demographics related to those yep. routes. So you can see how many people on average are in the household between the ages of 25 and 44. And you can see the average household income and the average number of people per per household within those routes. So it's usually like a random number, like 2.8. You know, mm -hmm. so they've got yeah. fractions of people <laughs> within their uh, within their demographics. It's really one of the few government run things yeah. that tech wise I can use it. I don't have to be a genius, and even if I am a genius, it's not stupid. Right. So it, like both sides, like wow, that's really smart, and I can be dumb or yeah. I can be really smart and use it even better. Right, and you can go to USPS.com. It's in the business services in the top menu tab. So you click on business and on the left side of the drop down, you'll see every door direct mail. If you click that, it takes you right into the map. You put in your address and it's going to tell you the routes and it's going to tell you the cost of the routes. Hooch and Hive, there was like 16,000 and something deliverable addresses within a one mile radius of their uh, of their location. So you can do it. You can drop a pin and you can do a radius as tight as a quarter mile and as big as five miles. Right. Um, you can send up to 5,000 pieces in a day uh, and you can do it yourself. You can do the direct mail yourself at TampaPrinter.com. We do offer the service. We do offer the full service, every door direct mail. 
or we do just the printing or we do the printing and the bundling. Um, different from direct mail standard, direct mail standard, you have to have the address on the postcard, which we have to sort and do different things to get reduced postage rates. This, you don't need a name. You don't need a list. There's no sorting. There's a little bit of paperwork to do, and it has to be bundled in packs of 50 or a hundred. So again, we do the printing, we do the printing and the bundling, or we do full service if you don't want to mess with it at all. But if you do everything on your own from the mailing side, you're paying the post office directly. You're just paying Tampa printer for the printing. Uh, which were listed, Tampa Printer is listed as a preferred printer for, for USPS and Yay. Tampa Bay. Um, but it, it's it's a very affordable way to reach your your immediate uh, direct audience. Yeah, hundred percent. It has some unique advantages um, from just a psychology point of view that you're going to get more connected to anything the more senses you use in that experience. So if I'm just looking at something online, I'm using one. Maybe two if we put sound on it. But from the direct mail, you're going to pick it up and you're going to turn it over. So now it's become active, which means it's going to have more retention for you and you're going to remember it a little better. Now, if you bundle that with a gift mm. of a, oh, wow, like if I go here, like I get a free coffee or I get a free something like Okay, that might be that little because now I'm already involved because I've turned the thing over. I own it. I've touched it. I've got the name recognition. Now that might be just enough to push me over that might not happen digitally. Or we take it even a step further and you put a QR code on the mail piece and now you're interacting with your device and you're going into the digital world from the physical. So you've gotten the tangible, the physical, the tactile. You've got a gift that you can redeem by bringing that into the physical location and you've got the digital interaction. Right. I mean, there's also the ability to look and see the zip codes of people you want to attract. Absolutely. And send uh, mail there. And there's also, you know, I think it's really important that especially like if there are any small businesses listening, listening and even restaurants, especially restaurants who have, you know, maybe moved a lot of their stuff to their Facebook page and mm -hmm. things like that, like. Print isn't trying to interfere with that. You know, we don't, print doesn't have to get someone to your website. Print can actually help get someone to your Facebook page. Absolutely. Where you can then uh, engage with them how the business wants to engage with them. I mean, at that point, it's it kind of becomes a handoff, you know. And it's also not just about attracting new customers, but it's about keeping current customers informed and maybe past customers that you still have some information about like, hey, you know, uh, with these are new hours or here's we haven't heard from you in a while. You know, here's come come back and try our new pancakes. Uh, uh, coffee's on us, you know, yeah. uh, to your point. Um, it's going to take a little to get people back, you know, off the out of the houses and, you know, into into stores and things like that. But. You know, they don't know what they don't know. And print and especially every door direct mail is a really inexpensive way to just to test and see what's going on, you know, and even repeat a few. And that's that's the only thing, you know, there is no mir miracle cure for anything like I, I no. mean, if anyone's out there, you know, and they have a social media account, you don't just or turn on, open up your social media account, all of a sudden you have 90,000 followers. Like it doesn't work like that. You have to share information. People have to be interested in it. And, uh, you know, so it, it's not a one and done situation. So that's what I'm saying. Like you would want to consult with like gorilla gurus and you would want to have a plan because without a plan, you're just throwing stuff on a wall and, and praying that something's going to happen instead of like making a cadence of a conversation that you want to be having with the people that you want to attract to your business and making them think of you. I always say a, a sale is when a need and a relationship meet, but you can't have a relationship with something you don't know exists or you don't know what their current state is. And I don't believe that everybody knows what the current state of all of their people are. I just found out the other day my dentist closed. Like now I don't have a dentist, you know? <laughs> so, uh, but they didn't even send me anything to tell me that. Nothing. I just kind of went to call and they're like, doo -doo -doo -doo. this number is, I was like, well, that's wow. interesting. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. Print, print is important. For sure. Printing is fun. <laughs> 
Well, for every door direct mail, which is kind of a weird tangent, but I long ago before Gorilla Gurus, I had a product that we called the Gorilla Mailer. And the Gorilla Mailer was an every door direct mail, or actually we called it a Gorilla Bomb. A gorilla Mailer came later. So Gorilla Bomb, we would do a Gorilla Bomb. So we would do an every door direct mail. Hold on, to, let's just make a disclaimer to the NSC that he is not there's nothing explosive about this uh, yes. quote unquote bomb. It's a it's uh, a hyperbole. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we would do an every door direct mail to a neighborhood, and in that same neighborhood that we knew when we knew the the postcards were going to hit the mailbox, we would go put yard signs up in all of the major intersections around the neighborhood. So they would get the piece of mail in their mailbox, and then they would see a sign for the same advertisement in their neighborhood. So you're hitting them twice at the same time. But for local business, now we stopped doing that because we actually got hit with a littering ticket, which would eventually become a felony. But you can do it on your postcard. You can say, check your inbox for our email. There you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but so, but for a brick and mortar business, people are driving by your business. If they live mm -hmm. near you, they see you. They may not have ever been in. They may not have even realized that they've seen you or taken notice to you. But you put a piece of mail in their mailbox and then that sign that they've driven by a hundred times then starts to resonate a little bit more and then they start to notice you. And if they've never been in before, they're going to be more likely to come in because of that multiple visualization. Uh, marketing, we used to say you had to see something at least three times before it resonates. And I think now it's like 12 it's way or something more than crazy. Well, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but, yeah. and it depends and it depends on the people because you might be yeah. those extreme early adopters who can see something once and go, that's what I want because mm -hmm. I want to be the first on the block with it. Um, if it's a product that they're used to and they have a comparison to, still four is kind of the minimum. They need to see you four times before they realize that you're legitimate. Mm. So if you've got those four, which can be easily any of those things, like the way we that we have just explained it, you can hit four in a day. Right. Yeah, <laughs> easily. Um, and then for the longer, then it's a, a longer game. So for people who are the, the quote unquote late adopters, then you're looking at that eight to 12. Um, and usually one of those really helps if it's their friends. So, but... Four is your general, I need to have four points of contact before people are really going to realize who I am. So hit word of mouth programs as much as possible, but print, get those flyers out there, get those posters up there. I mean, there's tons of things that you can do uh, and tons of places that you can leave them that people don't even think about. Well, I love that Starbucks bulletin board. I have to say, every time oh, I, yeah. I sometimes I just go in there to see what's going on on the bulletin board. Yeah, the bulletin boards. I mean, your Starbucks, your your tattoo shops, your co coffee shops in general, most sandwich places or independently owned restaurants. If it's Starbucks, is sort of the anomaly. Panera Bread, I think, has a bulletin board as well. Uh, even like Publix, I think, has a bulletin board inside. But most independent businesses have a bulletin board for you to be able to place. Uh, flyers or posters or, or just a or what part of the you. counter. Right. So you look at somewhere like a, an independent, like a blind tiger. Mm -hmm. uh, all of those have a little part of the counter where people set stuff down. The blind tiger. It's a really dope coffee shop. Hmm. I don't, I don't think great. I have one on my side of the, street, of the bridge. We'll have to go sometime. Okay. It's delightful. Excellent. Yeah. The other thing is that, um, you know, the, it's it's print enables you to tell your story in a, in a different way. And, uh, you know, I agree with with what you said, you know, uh, but it's really important to say, like, those minimal four touch points can't be the same message. It's not just right. sending the same message. You know, you you need to lead people somewhere or, um, you know, right now it's really interesting because um, – so there's all these privacy laws that are going to come and they're going to start really affecting anybody who does database marketing. So um, the brands are already starting to recognize this and they're also recognizing that they have, there's been like two years with people just swiping stuff and looking at scrolling and looking at screens and they want to be able to tell their story as they emerge from the pandemic what is their sustainability story? You, It's going to be huge when I say that. Like You're going to start seeing things everywhere you look. I've bet everybody telling their story. 
what they did for their communities, what they did for their their own employees. And these this is going to be how people are going to start be choosing the companies that they want to do business with. And I say they, I'm talking about the the millennials and the Gen Zers who are the biggest buying chunk of consumers. And that's why we all need need to care about them uh, in a in a general brand sense. But it's really important to to pay attention to what the brands do because everybody eventually ends up doing it. I don't know if you're Devil Wears Prada thing, but you know when she tells the story about the blue sweater, mm -hmm. it's exactly what it is. Like this is the blue sweater moment. The brands have made the blue sweater. Eventually, it's going to end up in you know the the local store on the you know the rack of just a ten dollar blue sweater. But right now, they're creating that designer version of right. the future of marketing really yeah agreed yeah it's going to be interesting to see as we continue to go I, I think you're you hit the nail on the head there's going to be a lot of you know kind of phoenix rising from the ashes mm -hmm. sort of stories uh how are we able to sustain what did we do Wait, how did we super bowl help? next year oh it's God. gonna be like a cry <laughs> it's like, oh my remember when the after 9 11 and those freaking budweiser horses bowed uh, i'm still not over that commercial <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be worse i think after this yeah and print's gonna play a major role in in all of that well and print again with that makes a logical segue print is more personal than digital mm -hmm. so if you're bringing a personal story that people can touch and it doesn't necessarily have to be like the direct mail or the flyer like you can think outside the box of things that people are going to touch with your message on it so it could be some custom paper or something that's from the print universe that's still tangible. Yep. I can touch it, but it's bringing a real story that I can relate to, even if that is just the segue for you to go online and see what the story is exactly. completely. Exactly. Learn more. That's all that that piece of print is about. And you're right. It is all of those things make you have an emotional connection, a physical connection to it. And then the story gives you an emotional connection. And the minute I go online, Will owns you. So, <laughs> Well, I can even think of a campaign from way back that started as a prank campaign. Uh, the company was True North. So it was like a healthy snack foodie kind of thing. But No wonder I never heard of but it. But they made it. Yeah. I didn't eat it. I just <laughs> read the campaign, but I, but I followed it in exactly what we've been talking about. Then they're like, you know, find your true North. I'm like, that sounds like some crap tastic freaking tagline that came out of a, a meeting room with a bunch of assholes. Sounds like an MLM, but <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was like, Oh, that, I actually but then they'll like have that. like a guy and his dog in the corner. And you're like, all right, what's the story with the guy and his dog. So I follow it. And they're like, Oh, okay. And they use people as examples. And like, Okay, I'm caught in. End of the day, I don't care. But they got me enough to follow that far to figure out what their angle right. was. Right. Uh, when I'm not even trying to dissect it from a marketing standpoint, I was just like, I'm really curious. What are they talking about? Because they had a dog in it. They well, caught your attention they, with a dog. Now they got, I met a horse today. <laughs> really? I did. His People name's like Tomahawk. Puppies. He's pretty you great. You did meet a horse named Tomahawk today. Yeah, well, <laughs> People do like puppies and cats and animals and things like that. So I feel like we can't talk about print and not talk about business cards. Mm -hmm. So business cards, I think, is is uh, an interesting and, and something that's evolved. And you go to different cities just within the United States, and the culture of a business card is different from city to city. And in, really? in, in, in how people use business cards, how they interact, if they have business cards. Mm. Um in Tampa, it's very prominent. Most most people have business cards. Um, it's it's a very business card forward city, I think, um, where not everybody, not every city is that way. Really, in in a lot of places that I've traveled, a lot of people don't have business cards or carry business cards at all. And the trend, it's becoming more trendy now to not carry a business card, but to do something digital. And skip the print, right? So I'm going to give you my number or I'm going to text you or they've got the little tap things that you can exchange and, and create a contact. For me, I hate it. I, I and, and not because I'm a printer and I print business cards, but like for me, if I'm at an event 
and I'm interacting with somebody and I'm meeting somebody, I kind of track who I met and the interaction that I had with them by the business card. And then that business card also acts as a prompt for me to follow up with them, and interact with them again, where if they just go into it as another contact in my phone, I don't even know how many contacts I have in my phone. And I'm probably not going to remember in a couple of days, oh, I met Jack at this event. I need to go back and reach out to Jack. So the the business card, I think, is 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 an important part of, especially if you're in the networking world and you're out and you're interacting with people, got to have a business card. I, I mean, I don't understand the concept of not having a business card. So I just not even computing in my head. <laughs> it doesn't uh, compute. I mean, I go <laughs> Wait, to huh? I go There's to printing. People that ev- don't have business cards. I go to printing events all the time, and the printers don't have business cards, and I scream at them. And, I, I was guilty for a very okay, long time. So you'll enjoy this story. I was at a printing event once, and this printer comes up to me, and he's telling me his story, and you know, he's he was telling me a woe is me story, right? And I'm like. And I'm always like, well, what are you going to do about that, you know? And I was like, well, give me a business card. I'll get in touch with you. He's like, I don't have a business card. I was like, what in God? I said, you're a printer. As a, he owned a print business. I was like, you own your own print shop, right? I'm like, he's, he's, he said, yes. I said, there's this thing called FedEx. Call your office and tell them to send you business cards. And I'm not talking to you again until you hand me a business card. The next day, he comes up to me at like 1030 in the morning and he gave me his business card. He had it sent first thing overnight and he thanked me. But I don't even understand the concept of not having a business card. Like I've, I've talked to a lot of people who don't carry business cards. Um, and I think the biggest issue is they don't understand how the human brain works. That they think that because they are so important, I'm going to remember them. But what? in reality... Like, I can't speak for them, but I know that anytime I'm going anything professional, I'm talking to at least 50, if not 300 people. Right. Out socially, I'm probably meeting at least 30 new people every time I'm out. And so remembering Mike, Dave, Phil, you know, I'm always like, I don't know, I think it starts with a D. Yes. You know, <laughs> like, I. but if I have that thing, I leave that trail of breadcrumbs right. for myself for the next day. Right. That... I'll go back the next day, go through my phone. If I saw posters for shows, I'm taking pictures right. of them. If I get business cards, I put them in with my cash, not with the rest of my business cards. Right. They go in on that one side so that that way I look at them all the next day and go like, oh, I remember that guy. I remember that conversation. Just the random dude I walked up to who's like, oh, no, here, just get me. Get, I'm going to get your information. And OK, look, now we're friends or. Now we have each other's information. I'm great. Now you're the 800th Dave in my phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, and and by the way, I appreciate a digital bridge on a business card, but I need that business card. And I have, I still see people writing things down on business cards. Like I met, uh, like what we discussed, I'll give some of my business card and, and they'll write it down, which by the way is, is an important point. You can't write on all business cards depending upon, you know, if they're coded or not coded or whatever like that. We just did a series uh, for uh, a company that their old business cards they hated. So like one side, Matt, with a big blank space so they can always write stuff down. See, I'm trending in business cards. But um, yes, once I've established, oh yeah, I remember who this is. When I put that person in my phone, I usually write a little note to myself on it. So I remember, like there are people in there like, Matt, uh, name of event and I that's enough for me to remember right. everything about the conversation that we had right and so in that those business cards are crucial for me so if anybody wonders why I have to ask my wife your name because everybody sees me do it right. like, yeah, I know that guy what's his name like that's why yeah the other <laughs> thing is I scan them and I put I add those people to my mailing list because they're interested they've seen me speaking at an event or they're interested in being part of my ecosystem and they've given me uh, permission to contact them, which includes an email address. So I contact them. You know, I don't call people randomly, but I do. I will send them my newsletter. And then there's a little handy opt out button if they thought that that was an intrusion. But most of the time they don't because they've already opted in by handing me that. Per- they, that's their, I mean, think of it that way. It's permission. If you get a business card from somebody and you hand somebody a business card, you're 
exchanging permission to continue the conversation. I think that's important. I agree. Well, and to tie it in with other topics that we've done, I mean, this is the age of networking is absolutely crucial. Yes. You have, if you're oh. not doing that, you're talking to a wall. So, right. so that exchange is really the foundation of networking. Yeah. Why you go to an event without a business card? I mean, are you going to start getting me into like the, you know, my crazy thing? Cause <laughs> I don't even understand. I don't understand the concept. I really don't. Yeah, it's 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 crazy, and I get the alternatives and the 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 taps and the the QR codes that you just have on the back of your phone. I've seen people with that; they'll have a QR code and they're like, oh, I don't have a business card, but you just gave my QR code. I get that, but what you you just to your point that lack of trail of breadcrumbs. I'm going. I mean, I'm ninety nine point nine percent less likely to interact with you again. Unless you reach out to me. <laughs> right. Well, that's the thing. <laughs> and like, then I can if, look you up again yeah. and go, oh, right, right, that guy. But that's the thing. <laughs> if that tap, right, sends me an email, like triggers an automated email, mm -hmm. like from that person that says, hi, my name's Matt. And um, if you're receiving this email, we met at this event, whatever. Now, that's the automation way. The other way would be that Matt now has a list of people that at the end of that day, He's got to turn around and say, hi, Deborah, I'm just connecting with you here. Here's the rest of my contact information. But I still think it's a ridiculous process. Yeah. Um, instead of just, I have the business card, I'm in control of the relationship as long as I have that business card. And I feel that's a classic case of <clears throat> we've automated it, so we've simplified it. So now it's more work and less impact. Right. And <laughs> exactly. And there's no human engagement. Like, yeah. which, I mean, business cards evolve from calling cards. Like when, if you know, you watch those old timey movies and they leave their calling card on the tray. The other thing is that business cards are legitimacy. You know, we, we talked before about, uh, you know, print being something that people trust, you know, and this is an interesting story, like way back before um, when people when um uh f dispensaries were first coming out uh back in new york city somebody in the new york times did an interview like uh with an anonymous person who owned a dispensary because they it was like you know when it first started and then they were still like people got cash and they were locking up the the uh people who own the dispensaries so um the new york times writer ended up writing about the guy's business card <laughs> And he was like, I've never seen anything like this. It was like heavy stock with like gold foil embossed. I mean, this, there were like $10 business cards, uh, each one. And he said to the guy, what's with the business card? And the owner of the dispensary said, this is what makes me a business owner and not a drug dealer. And I was like, oh. That's brilliant. <laughs> Who thinks... Anybody with that business card is not a legitimate business person. And I I tell that story as often as I can because that's the same thing for a florist and a baker and a I mean a baker could have a scratch and sniff. You wanna, you know, what my what my famous blueberry, you know, muffins smell like? Scratch and sniff this, you know? Oh, by the way, that's a good idea. Everyone could steal that. <laughs> or scan the QR code and get the recipe. Or, you know, something I mean, maybe not the recipe, but you know what I'm saying. But Come well, get a get a cup of coffee with your muffin. And I think that brings up something else interesting about the print industry that a lot of people don't think about is that it's a very, very creative problem solving industry. That I would say for the print side of our business, about fifty percent of the people come in knowing exactly what they want. That's generous. And then other folks kind of have an idea and we can work it through real quick. But there's a good percentage of people who have an idea but have no idea how to bring it to reality. Right. And that is something that is part of our jobs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. being creative and having that that spark of like, I'm a baker and I want to really stand out and having that idea of like, well, why don't we do a scratch and sniff business card? <laughs> you know, never seen right? that before. You're gonna start doing it, right? Um, and and the opportunities are endless. Uh, especially if the client is open to yeah. <laughs> to different things that print seems like before I was starting to work in the 
industry, it seemed very static. I need a thing, I get a thing made. I need a thing, I get a thing made. And it's not at all. It's just as creative, if not more so than the digital side, because the digital is limited to certain parameters. Right. Where print, you want it how big? We can make it however big you want. Right. You know, what, whatever colors, whatever textures, whatever. Whatever font. Yeah. Like there, if you can think of it, we can do it in a two and sometimes a three dimensional form. Right. Right. But, but you're, you're really making a, a a broad statement about the creativity of 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 all the print shops out there because most of them are not like you guys. <laughs> well, I'm just saying most most print shops take the order. That's what they're there to do. the The consultation, the collaborative relationship, is part of the engagement with your business. Is part of the relationship that you have with your customers and why they keep coming back and would want to work with someone who's more of a marketing services, uh, you know, company as well as just, just a printer. Yeah. We can just execute that exact menu as you want it, or we can add a, we can put it on anti by uh, antimicrobial, pa- uh, anti antimicrobial microbial paper, or we can put a, coating on it that allow you wash it at night they don't know that they're right. they go to go back they're civilians they don't know that stuff <laughs> but uh, some printers are just like that's what you want that's what you'll get whatever i'll print the menus 30 more times this year other printers are like hey to avoid you having to print this menu 30 times a year why don't we do it this way and now that i've just saved you all that money Let's talk about it every door direct mail postcard to get people in on f- f- your Friday night happy hour, to get people on your Facebook page or to get them to try the Sunday meatloaf special. Whatever the hell it is, print can get you there. Yeah. I mean, I feel like it's kind of a weird analogy, but I think it's pretty true that having run a record store, that running a good print shop is a lot like a record store. That the first time somebody comes in, they think they know what they want. Yep. So you're going to ask them a few questions to make sure that they're on the right path. But hey, that's what they want. They get that. But once you learn their tastes, and you, once you learn what makes them tick, then when they come in, then you can, like, when you're in the shower in the morning, think, oh, that customer, next time they come in, I got to remember, because this is a really cool idea for what they do. And we take it very personally and make it very customized to their thing. I just rewatched High Fidelity the other day, so that totally reminds me of that. It's a great movie. He's like, you don't want that, you want this. You don't want oh, this, you want well, that. See, yeah, see, I I was very much the John Cusack in in that. Uh, I definitely had a Jack Black out of that at yeah, my store. I like Jack Black in that movie. It's funny. <laughs> well, are there any other uh, any other points of print that we should touch on? I mean, I think we've we've hit signs, we've hit business cards, we've hit direct mail, we've hit display. I would um, just I would just say to the people listening out that ask questions. Ask a lot of questions. Yeah. What and and especially what will this do for my business? And whether it's you or anybody else if the person that part, person can't answer that question, move on until you find someone who who can answer, you know, what is this investment going to do for me? What is the possibility of that investment? And when it works, Keep investing in it, you know, you, you know, don't say, well, it worked once, I'm good. You know, it worked once, you've opened a door. Now keep that door open by telling your story, by, you know, keeping the relationship of going. Contact lead by to adoption. bringing them and, to, exactly, to your Facebook page or an Instagram or something like, don't just say I've got the customer in the ecosystem and it's over. It's just the beginning of the relationship. Keep it going. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Deborah, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's always awesome to see you. Um, and uh, for those of you listening at home, uh, tampaprinter.com for <laughs> all of your printing needs. I will do the shameless plug on this round. Uh, you can order from us online at tampaprinter.com. You can come to the store at 1723 West Kennedy Boulevard, or you can call us at 813-PRINTER. Ooh, yeah. good number, William. <laughs> He gets all the good numbers. The details. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. And thanks for tuning in. Have a have a great week. Ook ook. Ook ook. ook. <laughs>